So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Sandra Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over something quite different and it's called the Towers of Hanoi. Now you might be wondering, what's the Tower of Hanoi? Also called Brahma's Tower or the Tower of Brahma, sorry, uh, or Lucas's Tower. Well, simply put, the Tower of Hanoi is just a puzzle. But I really want to get into the details in this part one. But I have to do that on the Mac since there's a demonstration of this puzzle on my Mac. So we'll do that in just a minute, but first let me explain. The Tower of Hanoi is a simple puzzle. Uh, it, and the reason I just said that it's also called Lucas's Tower is because it was invented by a French mathematician uh, called Edouard Lucas in 1883. Now, this puzzle is a bit complicated. So what I've done is I've created my own algorithm. Now again, I haven't seen this online yet, but if you do find this, please notify me in the comments or email me at tajimanygmail.com. Further info will be at the end of the video uh, and mostly at the end of the series. But anyway, continuing. Now, it, uh, I've, I've created my own algorithm, and so I've implemented this in the new language that, Swift cr that Apple has created called Swift. Uh, so now I'm in part one going to be explaining the actual game to you and also again this algorithm uses trees as you know if you've been watching my channel for a while I do like trees quite a bit in algorithms <laughs> anyway continuing I they're just really nice to code in but anyway apart from that getting back on topic uh, in part one I'm going to be explaining the game the rules and a simple demo play uh, then in part two I'm going to be explaining the algorithm in part three I'll go more in depth with maybe a little uh, UI for it and in part four, I'm not exactly sure uh, that's just going to be an extra part for extra information. So without further ado, let's get to the Mac part of this video so we can actually start with the rules and a sample demo play of this puzzle. So welcome back to the Mac part. Now I'm going to be teaching you the rules for this game, uh, how you can calculate the number of moves, and I'm also going to be teaching you a little human algorithm that you can use to solve the Tower of Hanoi by yourself. Again, I wouldn't really recommend programming this algorithm in, but let, we'll get to that right after uh, these. Okay, so again, the uh, object or point of the game is to get these three blocks, or these three disks, uh, they can, these can be as many disks as you want, but I'm using three as an example first, from tower one to tower three. Now, the thing is, you can only move one disk at a time, and the disk that you move must be at the top of a stack. Also, you can place smaller disks on top of bigger disks, but you cannot place bigger disks on top of smaller disks. So, now let's talk about, now that we've seen all the rules, let's talk about how we would see a little human algorithm implementation of this. How would I come up here and bring these three disks from tower one to tower three. Well, first let me just do it for you so you get a feel for the game, then I'll explain the algorithm. So I'm going to do this over here, this over here, move this back over here, move this to the end, move this to the front, move this to the end, and move this to the end as well. And as you can see, I have solved it in the minimum number of moves. Again, minimum number, number of moves is something that I will explain in just a second. However, look at this. I, oh, I managed to move these three disks from tower one to tower three. Now let me do the same thing for four. As you can see, it's progressively getting solved. and it's starting to take a bit of shape. As you can see, now I've deconstructed the whole thing. You're like, what just happened? Why did you deconstruct it? Well, this is why, because we need this orange block to go up here. Then it's as simple as this. And it's done. Now you may or may not have noticed a pattern in what I just did. Now let's go back to three disks, and now let me explain the algorithm that I'm using to solve this. That's really quick and easy to grasp. First of all, what we want to do is we want to see the number of disks that we have. 
In this case, it's 3. And 3 is an odd number. Now, there's going to be a pattern that I'm going to use right now. The pattern is 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. 3, 2, 1. Uh, and keeps going on. 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1. Now, the reason we're using this, this uh, pattern is because we want to see, first of all, what move are we currently doing? If we take a move, what will this number become over here, the moves number? In this case, it'll be 1. And 1 is an odd number. And on odd turns, we're going to use this specific pattern. So we want to take the smallest disk and move it in accordance to that pattern. The pattern is, as we know, 3, 2, 1. That means if it's on 1, move it to 3. If it's on 3, move it to 2. And if it's on 2, move it to 1. Then repeat that. And repeat that again and repeat that again until we solve. But there's a catch. Watch this. I'll, I see uh, that this is an odd turn with odd disks. So I'm going to take the smallest disk that we have on the board and move it over here. Now we're at an even turn. So we have to do something else. We cannot move the smallest disk anymore. We have to give a chance to other disks. So now, in order to solve this problem, we just see what's the only thing we could do right now. There are actually three things we could do. We could move this back, but that's pointless. We could move it over here, but that's again pointless. Or we could move this disk over here, which has reasoning. So I'm going to take this disk and put it right on there. Now again, we want to move three, which is odd. So I'm going to take this, and our pattern is three, two. Oh, three to two. So, I'm going to take the smallest disk, uh, smallest disk sorry, and move it from tower 3 to tower 2. Now we're on an even turn, 4. So we take uh, the only possible move, which is moving this orange disk over here, and do it. Then we say, okay, odd turn, 5. So I see, okay, smallest disk is over here, 3, 2, 1. 1, okay, 1. Good. Now it's the only possible move. We know it's moving this green disc on top of the orange. And then, simply we can see, I mean, we could just move this over here, but let's see what our pattern says, because it's move 7, which is odd. So move 7 is odd, and 3, 2, 1, that means 1 to 3. Okay, so I have to move the smallest disc from tower 1 to tower 3, and we win in exactly 7 moves. Now, I might be wondering... Why, how did we know that the minimum number of moves will be 7? Well, it's this simple. All we need to do, 2 to the power number of disks minus 1. So in this case, 2 to the power 3, which is 8, minus 1, 7. That's going to be the minimum number of moves. It's physically impossible to get lower moves than that. Now 4, 2 to the power 4, that's 16, minus 1, that's 15. So we will have, at minimum, 15 moves. Now let's try to solve 4. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it's telling us that we have 15 minimum moves. And now, this is even, so the pattern won't work here. We have to use instead a different pattern, which will be 2, 3, 1. Not 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1 instead. So if it's on 1, move it to 2. If it's on 2, move it to 3. And if it's on 3, move it back over to 1. Let's get started. So, by it, I'm talking about the smallest disk. So, as you can see, we are on an odd turn. So, we take the smallest disk, we go to our pattern, and our pattern says 3, 2, 1. I mean, sorry, 2, 3, 1. So, we move it from tower 1 to tower 2. Then we see what the only possible move is, and that's to move this green block over here. Then our pattern again is 2, 3. So 2 to 3. This is the only possible move. 2, 3, 1. So I move the smallest disk over to 1. Then this is the only possible move. 2, 3, 1. That means from 1 over back to 2. 
then this is the only possible move. 2, 3, 1 again, so 2 to 3. This is the only possible move. Then from 3 over to 1, of course. Then this is the only possible move. Then 1 to 2, as we know, due to our pattern. Then this is the only possible move. And then finally, 2 to 3. So technically, we win in exactly 15 moves. So as you can see, this algorithm is amazing. It helped us solve three and four disks in exactly 15 moves. Now, that would actually be it for this video. But just to show you that it really does work, I'm going to do this with one last set of disks, five disks. So now as you can see, the minimum moves will be 31 because two to the power five is 32 minus one, 31. Okay, so now we know this is odd, so we have to follow 3, 2, 1. So let's move our... I'm not going to talk through this because you should know the pattern by now. I'm just going to do it in my head and let's see if you can follow along. So, smallest disk to 3. Possible move, only possible move. Uh, from 3 to 2, only possible move. From 2 to 1, only possible move. Uh, from, uh, sorry, okay, so uh, from 1 to 3, yes, then this is the only possible move, then 3 to 2, uh, and then this is the only possible move, then again, uh, 2 to 1, and then this would be the only possible move, then 1 to 3, this would be the only possible move, and then 3 to uh, 2, and now as you can see, we've moved 4 discs over to tower 2, and then we still have this one disc left over in tower one that we can move over here. Now we just need to move these three discs, oh, I mean four discs, over here, and then we would have been done. So now let's do this. Now from tower two over to tower one, because we're on an odd turn, then this is the only possible move. From tower one to tower three, then this is the only possible move. From tower three to tower two, then this is the only possible move. From tower two to tower one, this is the only possible move. From tower one to tower three, then this. From tower three to tower two, then this. From tower two to tower one, then this. And then from tower one to tower three. And we have solved five discs, completing this part of this series. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. And as you can see, we've solved it in exactly 31 moves. We made a perfect game. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, suggestions, concerns, leave it in the comments. You can even email me at tagimanagemail.com if you want to, if you have any more questions or concerns. You can also tweet me at tagimani on Twitter, uh, and you can also subscribe to my channel if you uh, like my content and you want to see more of it, or if you're just plain new to the channel or want to receive notifications of whenever I re uh, upload a new video. I will be very soon uh, actually releasing part two and three of these of this series. And that's going to be it. Goodbye.